to prophets and the great promise maker that our Islam shall prevail over all other religions. And with help, heartfelt and sincere offerings of blessing to the last and the greatest of the prophets, Muhammad al-Mustafa al-Amin, may the peace and the blessings of Allah be upon him. With that said, once again, or once, from the beginning, I greet you in the greetings of peace, love, and complete paradise, my brothers and sisters, and our customary greeting, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I want to say that once more. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I don't do that. I get a little more spirit out of you. you know, that spirit gets you, you know, get you started, you know. What we want to talk about today, the subject for today is reflecting on Allah's light. We want to deal with Surah 24. Ayats 35 to 40, and we're going to reflect on a little more ayats after that, inshallah, the time permit us. You know, when dealing with the Agolic verses of the Quran, Allah says about them to understand something of the allegorical, you must first be grounded in the basics. Once you get grounded in the basics, right, of your deen, and get grounded, you know, get really familiar with the Quran, and you're sincere, Allah opens up to you understanding. He helps you to, to, to perceive things. So when you get to the allegorical verses, what happens is, because it's you sincere, and because your heart is clean, then Allah allows you to touch it. He allow you to see some things. And we don't want to get dogmatic, meaning that we don't want to put a dominant meaning and say, well, this is exactly what it means, because only Allah knows. You know, all we can do is basically give some insight based on the knowledge that we have. But we can't get dogmatic saying, oh, this is what it means. This is what it means. Nah, how you know? You know what I'm saying? Only Allah knows. You know, we can get a glimpse of it. So I want to point out a couple of points. You know, our late leader, Imam Muhammad, Rahimullah, may Allah grant him paradise because through him, many people took their shahada. Many people took their shahada. And Islam became popular because of that man's actions. He became popular all over the country because prior to that, many Muslims who were you know, Muslims and and and, and, and uh, the, the, the Salaf Asali, you know, supposed to be the right. It wasn't making no noise. It wasn't propagating. I read the history. They would not propagate nothing. They would keep the Islam and practice to themselves. It was when Imam Muhammad came, when the Sunnah started really, you know, public speaking start being a big thing now. That's when it came. This is the history. And I'm not trying to promote Imam Muhammad, but Imam Muhammad did some things that, <laughs> you know, he did some things that really boosted the Sunnah and, 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 and caused the people to have a lot of clear understanding of how we go about spreading this deen throughout America. So, we're talking about the subject reflecting on Allah's light. And this same, this, this point that I, I was speaking about, uh, about the allegorical. A lot of people, like I said, Imam, they used to say what he says, you know, when they when they hear him speak and he would speak on the allegorical. Sometimes he may have a certain uh, method in the way he taught. He, like many of the traditional uh, scholars and um, teachers, they used to teach, and, and a lot of times, they will present their proofs. They will present, and, and that's proper in Islam, that's proper. But the imam had his own way. You know, when he used to talk a lot of times, he didn't always give you the verses of where you can get this or the books of where you can get this knowledge from. So what happens is, 
a lot of times, a lot of brothers, because of the powerful speeches that he was given, they would take and they would run with what he say, and they would say things and try to teach what he uh, teach, and they didn't understand, you know, where he got that from, or or how did he arrive at those conclusions, and and how did he arrive at that understanding, and what happens, you know, sometimes with confusion, more confusion comes. In Islam, you have to have your proof of what you're talking about, because you will always be confronted with those individuals who know they deen and are grounded in the Quran and the Sunnah. And when you start presenting things, they might want, you might sound good at what you're talking about, and they might want to know where you get that from so they can quote it themselves. So they can be sure of what they're talking about. So they might want you, you know, brother, where you get this from? I got it from Hadith, but I forgot exactly what section, uh, but it came from uh, Bukhari, or it came from uh, uh, Ibn Tami, um, not Ibn Tami, but uh, uh, Ibn Majah, or you know, you have proof of what you're saying. And number point, the point number two, when you seek to spread this deen, right, without proof or clear understanding to other Muslims or to other people in general, right, sometimes you may run into people who are kind of semi-grounded in knowledge or grounded in knowledge and the first thing when you, you, you say something, right, and it don't sound right, it just don't sound right, right? The first thing they're going to say, well, where you get that at, brother? Where you get that at, sister? That's the first thing they're going to say. And then, if you, if you don't know where it come from, you just mimicking and repeating what you heard somebody else say, right? That may be learned and grounded. Now you're stuck. Now you're stuck. Then you try to defend something that you don't truly understand yourself. As a result, what happens? <coughs> Big argumentation. <coughs> Big argument. And that happens a lot. Allah says in the Quran in Surah 3, Ayat 6 and 7, it is he who creates you in the womb as he pleases. There is no God but he, the exalted and might the wise. It is he who is sent down to thee, is talking about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is he who is sent down to thee the book. In it are verses, ayats, basic and fundamental, of established meaning. They are the foundation of the book. Others are allegorical. But in his whose heart is perversely chose the part thereof that is allegorical, seeking discord, argumentation, searching for his hidden meaning. But no one knows his hidden meaning except Allah. And those who are firmly grounded in knowledge say, we believe in the book. The whole of it is from our Lord. And none will grasp the message except men of understanding. To get the clear understanding of the book, you have to allow yourself and afford yourself time to get grounded in the basics. And if you're sincere, Allah will bless you with a glimpse of the allegorical. Allah says also in the Quran, in Surah 2, Ayat, 26, 27, 28. He says, Allah disdains not to set forth the similar to lowest as well as highest. Those who believe know that is true from their Lord. But those who reject faith say, what means Allah by this similar to? By it, he causes many to stray. And many, he leads into the right path. But he only caused the straight those who forsake the path. Those who break Allah's covenant after it is ratified. And who shun it with Allah is ordered to be joined. And do mischief on earth. How can you reject the faith in Allah? Seeing that you were without life. And he gave you life. Then he will cause you to die. Raise you back onto life. Then unto him you shall return.
is the law who created all things on earth. And he turned towards the heavens and created seven firmaments. And of all things, he had perfect knowledge. So, what is we talking about? We talking about Allah's light. Allah's light. Allah is the one who created us in the womb as he pleases. Ain't no other God but he that exalted in might the wise. That's Toyin. Allahumma salli ta'ala ibrahim wa ibrahim Kama salli ta'ala ibrahim wa ibrahim in the corner of Majid Allahumma baraka ta'ala ibrahim wa ibrahim Kama baraka ta'ala ibrahim wa ibrahim in the ha kahaman in Majid Oh Allah Bless the true fathers of Muhammad that dealt this blessed Abraham and the true fathers of Abraham. Truly thou art praised and magnified. Allah, exalt the true fathers of Muhammad that did exalt Abraham and the true fathers of Abraham. Truly thou art praised and magnified. I greet you once again, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters, in the greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, now let's get into our subject. We done did the preliminary, prepared the way. Allah says in the Quran, and for the sake of time, you know, I practice my Arabic a lot, you know. I always try to go in the Quran and recite it so I can stay fluent with it. But I'm not as fluent that I want, so I can't just, I still struggle with it. And it's blessings when you struggle with it, according to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi but we're going to go to the English, the translation. Allah says, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. You hear that? Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. Now we see that light right there. That's the physical light to help us to see right here in this masjid. Right? But Allah says, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. And the parable. What is a parable? A parable is a short story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. Did we hear that? Because we've met many parables in the Quran. A parable is a short story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. So when you read the Quran and you run across parables, understand what is there to illustrate to you for you to get a moral lesson. What's right and wrong or a spiritual lesson that would touch the heart and clean you up. I remember the, the former translation of the Quran when it was in Surah Yusuf and he said the, 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 the um, Islam is the baptism of Allah and who can better baptize than Allah but they changed the translation and they made it they, they changed the translation they revised it and they said the color and who can better color than Allah I liked it the first one, the first translation I liked it that when we're dealing with this parable, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. The parable of his light is as if there was a niche and within it a lamp. And what is a niche? A niche is a recess like this. You could say this is right here. Inside, this, this could be the niche, right? That's the niche. You could put something in it. But we put books in it, but, it, you know, you can put something in it. That's a niche. It said, the power of his light is, is as if there was a niche and within it a lamp. So there's the niche. And we're going to use this hat as an example. It's the lamp, right? 
That's the land, right? And the lamp enclosed in glass, right? So now you got the niche, and you got the lamp, and the lamp is enclosed in glass, right? The glass, as if it were a brilliant star. So now you got the glass, right? The glass is like a brilliant star. A brilliant star. Lit from a blessed tree. Now, not only do you got the neat, and you got the lamp, you got the glass, like a brilliant star, it's lit from, now you, you got it's from a blessed tree. It's from a blessed tree. And olive, neither of the east, and olive, neither of the east nor the west. <laughs> so here it is, you got this, you got this. Neat, right, that has a lamp, and the lamp is enclosed in the glass, and the glass was like a brilliant star lit from a blessed tree. So we know that the lamp is in the tree. And you know the tree is, can be allegorical too, because the tree can stand for you. The tree can stand for you. You see? You grow, and, and, and you give off. You, you, you receive, and you give off. You know, this is allegorical. Neither of the east nor the west. So this tree is neither of the east or the west. So no one has superiority, the west or the east. No one has to claim superiority, the west or the east. whose oil is well nigh luminous. So the oil of this lamp is well nigh, Allah says, luminous. So it's so bright. It's, you know, the blessed star. It's like a blessed star, right? And then Allah says, don't fire, scarce touch it. It barely touch it, right? It barely touch it, because you know when the fire lights up, right? It barely touch it. Light upon light. Light upon light. Throw the fire and barely touch it. Light upon light. A Lord doeth God whom he will to his light. So when you see the niche and it has a lamp and a lamp enclosed in glass and the glass as though it was a, a brilliant star from a blessed tree in the island, neither of the east or the west. Don't fire and barely touch it. Barely touch it. Well nigh as luminous. You can still see. That tree, you can still see things. Light upon light. That's how bright it is. Light upon light. And Allah says, Allah do his God whom he wills to his light. Thus do Allah set forth Parables for men, and the law doeth know all things. <laughs> so deep, so deep, so deep. You know, Allah blesses whom He pleases. When you live in a normal life, you're working, you take care of your family, and you're doing the normal things that a human being do, and you're trying to be a better Muslim, you know. And do the normal things that human beings do. Like we said earlier, you don't have to be holier than thou. But strive to be holier than thou. Nevertheless, don't view yourself as holier than thou. That's the key. That's the key to keep the balance. Because in Islam, it always trying to get you to do better and get better qualities about yourself. It always does that. The Quran, and it tells you the three types of men, the, the believer, the unbeliever, the rejecters, and the hypocrites. 
Once you understand these type of men, you can cite, you can sometimes you can spot them. But your, your knowledge is not exact. Our knowledge is not exact. We can spot them. But we don't have to be judgmental. Let people live. Moving right along, Allah says, Lit is such a light in houses which Allah has permitted to be raised to honor for the celebration of them of his name. Masjid al Qasa, Masjid al Nabi in Medina, Masjid al Haram in Mecca, and all these little local masjids, all churches, I would say, I'm saying this now, all churches where Allah's name is, is, is put up. Even though we keep, we caution you that many of the churches practice shirk. They practice shirk. But that's for Allah to judge them. All we can do is stay away from that type of teaching. That's all we can do. It's for Allah. Because we're not God. We only serve as a God. So it said, lit is such a light in houses which Allah has permitted to be raised to honor for the celebration in them, in the masjids, in Masjid al Hazar, in Masjid al Haram, and in, in, in the Prophet's Mass, and all these other masjids or churches. This is what I'm saying. Right? In them is he glorified in the mornings. We may pray, uh, fight your prayer this morning, you know? And the brothers and sisters who made Father Pray at home. Right? In the mornings, in the evenings, again and again. By men, by men, whom neither traffic nor merchandise can divert from the remembrance of Allah. Everybody here, you didn't allow money to revert you. You came here and you know that you can stay at work and make that money. It said here, by men whom neither traffic nor merchandise can divert from the remembrance of Allah. That money not going to stop you when you come to the remembrance of Allah. And when you do that and Allah is looking down on you, you think he don't see, he don't recognize your efforts, your sacrifice to please him, he's going to bless you, Aki. He's going to bless you, Aki. by men whom neither traffic nor merchandise can divert from the remembrance of Allah, nor from regular prayer, nor from the practice of regular charity. They give charity out of love for Allah because they know that we ain't going to be here forever. And Allah is count every little dime you give to help the cause. The more you give, the more blessings you get. Their only fear is for a day when hearts and eyes will be transformed in a world wholly new. That's the only fear. That's our only fear. Because we Muslims, we don't view the world like other people do. We know we're here for a hot minute and we're gone. The Prophet Muhammad said, I'm just like a traveler who takes a rest under a tree. And when I rested, I moved right along. What is he telling you? He's telling you that this is how this world is. You're here for a hot minute, and it's gone. And if you haven't really done anything, after about maybe 20, 30, 40 years, everybody ain't thinking about you no more. They ain't thinking about you no more. About 20, 30 years, maybe somebody remember you, bring you up here and there. But if you haven't really done anything, they're not going to remember you. Then Allah goes on, he said, that Allah may reward them according to the best of their deeds. See, Allah is going to reward us according to the best of our deeds. Not the, the least of our deeds, but the best of them. And add even more for them out of his grace. So he's going to bless you according to the best of your deeds and add more out of his grace. For the good that you do to benefit people in society. And your family. 
For Allah doeth provide for those whom he will. So Allah is going to provide for you if he will. Without measure. No limit. No limit to it. But the unbelievers, the coffee rooms, right? Their deeds are like a mirage. You know what a mirage is. Something that you think you see, but you really don't see. He said, but the unbelievers, their deeds, the things that they do in this world, right? It's like a mirage. In sandy deserts, in sandy deserts, which the man perched with thirst, he thirsty, he mistakes for water. Until when he comes up to it, he finds it to be nothing. <laughs> he finds it to be nothing. It was a mirage. This is how some people is with their deeds. They think they can accomplish and stuff. You know, a lot of people doing a lot of conniving stuff. They got positions in this world, and they doing a lot of conniving things. Right? Got power. Power's in, woo, power is something. They doing these things, right? And it's like the mirage in the sandy desert in which the man perched with thirst, mistakes for water, until when he comes up to it, he finds it to be nothing, but he finds a lot. Oh my God, I thought this was water. Oh my God, God, I need some water, I need some water. He finds a lot. Ever with him. <laughs> and the Lord will pay him his account, and the Lord is swift in taking account. So everybody going, you know, you ain't going to get away with nothing. Or the unbeliever state, so Allah said, or, so now it's another state. He said, or the unbeliever state is like the depths of darkness, the depths of darkness. In a vast deep ocean, overwhelmed by billows, topped by billows, topped by dark clouds. And what is a billow? A billow is a, it's like a, it's like a, 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 a body of water, dark water, and it's coming. So, you know, the unbeliever state, this is his state of mind. They don't see nothing. Deaf, dumb, and blind. They don't see anything. The this is Allah's talking. I'm just repeating what Allah said. He said, or oh, the unbeliever state is like the depths of darkness in the vast, deep ocean, overwhelmed with billow, topped by billow, topped by dark clouds. Depths of darkness. <laughs> One above another, if a man stretches his hands out, stretches out his hand, he can hardly see it. He can't see it. It's so dark. For any to whom a Lord gives not light, there's no light. Allah got to bless you with that light. Allah goes on. And that was pretty much the gist of what I'm saying, but I want to elaborate on some more in that surah. Allah says, seest thou not it is Allah whose praises all beings in the heavens and on earth do celebrate? So every being in the heavens and earth had their form of prayer. And the birds of the air with wings outspread. Each of them knows his own mode of prayer. You see that? Everything, every animal know their own mode, mode of prayer. Nay, it is they themselves who do wrong. Oh, somebody, excuse me. That, that don't need to sound like a go. <laughs> it's it. Know his own form of prayer and praise. And Allah knows well all that they do. Yeah, to Allah belongs the dominions of the heavens and the earth. And to Allah is the final goal of all. Allah trusts the prophet. He says, seest thou not that Allah makes the clouds move gently? Then joins them together. Then makes them into a heap. Then would thou see rain issue forth from their midst. Rain come down. When he heat the clouds together. 
and he sends down from the sky mount, mountain, mountain masses of clouds when they all come together, right? Where in his hell, hell is like that uh, stuff that come down, you know, that we use for snow, to melt the snow, that did it. He strikes there with whom he pleases, and he turns it away from whom he pleases. So a lot of us, when he bring that down, when all them clouds come together and he bring down to hell, he strikes whom he want to. You could be, somebody else could be, it'd be a group of people get stroked, and you'd be walking alone, don't even get stroked. <laughs> a lot strikes whom he pleases. And it ain't for you to question who he stroked. You don't know them. You don't know what they did. He knows what they did. He know their history. He strikes there with whom he pleases, and he turns it away from whom he pleases. The vivid flash of his lightning well nigh blinds the sight. It is the law who alternates the night and the day. Verily, in these things is an instructive example for those who have vision. And Allah created every animal from water. And of them there are some that creeps on their bellies, and some that walk on two legs, and some that walk on four. Allah creates what he wills. Well, verily, Allah has power over all things. We have indeed sent down signs that make things manifest, and Allah guides whom he wills to a way that is straight. They say, we believe in Allah and the Messiah, and we obey, but even after that, some of them turn away. They are not really believers. When they are summoned to Allah and his messenger in order that he may judge between them, behold, some of them decline to come. But if, they, but if the right is on their side, they come to him with all submission. It is, is it that there is a disease in their hearts, or do they doubt, or are they in fear that Allah and his messenger will deal unjustly with them? Nay, it is they themselves who do wrong. Allah's light, Allah's light is well nigh luminous, like that niche we talked about. That's well not luminous. Don't fire, scarce touch it. Luminous. Light upon light. And Allah will give you that light if you sincere and you take your time to understand your Quran and your Hadith. The Sunnah, the Uswa, whatever you want to call it. And you try to mold yourself into Whatever you can, the closest you can get to that man, we're going to fall short. We're going to fall short. But Allah's light is available for all who seek him with a sincere heart. I greet you as I came. As-salamu alaykum. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.